And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another episode of Generation Shock. This week's episode, Investing for Your Future. Can't wait. This is going to be a great one. Let's kick it. That's right, that's right, that's right. And for those of you viewing in live, as you can see, we have a special guest here with us today to help us talk investments and about future. It's one of our good friends. You guys are uh, longtime watchers. You guys will know this guy already. We got our boy Nate here. What up, Nate? Yo, 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 what up? Phoenix born 63. <laughs> What's that? Um, it's basically a name change that happened. Um, I had my old name, which was Nasty Nate. And from there, I was like, you know what? Let me just, like, it's, it's time for a new turn of in life. And then I just changed it from there. Phoenix being obviously the Greek myth mythology of the bird and all that. So whenever Phoenix comes up to life, it, it, it means you've been reborn. So that's kind of like where the name comes from. Cool, cool. Awesome. You know, it's funny. You're the second person we've had on this show that, uh, you know, decided they're going to have to change their name in order to be on live with us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we had the McNutty change it to Nelly and, you know, Nasty Nate don't want to get the word out there. So you got to be Phoenix born. So what's the 63 again, though? I missed that part. What was the 63? Was it 63 or 69? No, no, 63. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I thought it said 69, but well, for a second. No, no. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Uh, <laughs> no, 63 is my Maybe it's just number, me. So. Oh, okay. I thought you were just, I thought you were just repping the year that Messiah, you know, got, you know, was what? Like 18, what? 0063? 0, 0, 0, 0, <laughs> yeah, something like that, you know. <laughs> the year I was born? Yeah. 63, 63 million years ago he's like fucking <laughs> um as always you got my boy Messiah. i'm your boy the monster on the mic check monster and uh, you know looking forward to this episode it's something that I'm, I, I'm getting into and i know a lot of the viewers out there probably get into as well so don't be afraid to comment uh and write your questions in for phoenix born or Messiah or myself about what we do how we invest different things but we'll go into more detail in a minute as always though it's time for the best segment of the show maybe not the best but at least a better intro than the other one <laughs> let me put that out there like that. i was gonna say that yeah, I, was gonna I, say know, I know i know what you're gonna say all right it's time for a monster week in sports let's hit it all right all right all right as always don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell like us, leave some comments down below, and uh, you know we got we got some good things. So NFL's back, right? Full swing preseasons here. Yes, sir. Before we yes, hop into NFL talk, there was a uh, pretty cool event in baseball I want to bring up. It was the Field of Dreams game. And so for those of you young kids out there who probably don't know, uh, Field of Dreams was a movie. Okay, I know Nate, you <laughs> might be too young to have seen it. It was a classic. It was oh, a tearjerker. <laughs> it was a great movie. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was actually, do you know, have you they seen it? it? Did you they see it, come. Phoenix? Have you seen the movie before? No. Okay. I, I, the you only never thing seen I know it? about the movie? No, the only thing I know about the movie is it's a field and something about a spirit of a baseball player. And then these kids dream of playing baseball. Like, that's all I know. So it's so not that. So, so that. real quick, a little synopsis of the, of the movie. What it is, is uh, it, it, it's a gentleman who buys a farm and he has, you know, cornfields and everything like that. And he starts having these dreams uh, and, and, you know, about the, um, about certain like famous baseball players, shoeless Joe Jackson, and, um, some of those white Sox guys that it was a scandal that they were actually in 19, I think it was 1919 was the year that they supposedly cheated and they got the world series revoked. Right. So it was this whole thing about the, you know, a movie that kind of tied into that whole story again, um, a little bit, but he, the, this guy who owned this had this dream. And like Messiah was saying, if you build it, they will come. Right. And he just has this going through his head. So he finally decides he's going to tear down his cornfields and build a baseball diamond. And then one oh, night, okay. all the spirits of these players came back and he got to play a game. And lo and behold, in this on the field, in this whole thing was his father. 
So he got to play, not only did these guys get to play one more game, but he also got to see his father who he didn't grow up really knowing um, and things of that nature. So it was a really cool movie. They decided they were to recreate it with the Yankees and the White Sox. And so that was really cool. Unfortunately, the game didn't turn out quite like I would have liked. Unfortunately, the Yankees <laughs> lost in the ninth <laughs> inning. But you, I, you, you want to talk about something amazing. Could you think of a better setup? of a better ending for this first ever game in history than have a walk off home run in the bottom of the ninth. Are you kidding me? Like yeah. that, that's just mind that's, blowing. And, and, yeah. and I'm like, now nah, Nate mentioned it. Cause I didn't watch it. Um, they walk out of the cornfield exactly like the movie. That that's pretty cool that they did that. Oh yeah. It was, it was a very cool game. Um, yeah. But NFL's back. I'll yeah, no, oh, go ahead. Nate. No, I was gonna say yeah, it was really cool. Like, even though I don't know too much of the movie, I was when, I, when they came out the cornfield, I was like, oh, that's like that yeah, brings that's why I, to that's it. exactly and it just what happens to the, the movie. Yeah, no, it's that's definitely a dope just appearance as it comes out like that. It, it's it's gave me goosebumps. So Aaron Judge, the size of the of the cornfield, know, he's right. like. <laughs> He stood out. You could see him coming from a mile away. <laughs> yeah, but still, that silhouette <laughs> of them, you know, being behind them and watching them walk through was just. That's actually cool. I didn't think they was going to go all the way out like that, all, all out like that. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Well, remember, this was supposed to happen last year, but COVID screwed it up. I was looking at tickets, yeah. though. They were like a couple thousand dollars uh, for tickets. I would have died to go into that game. That would have been like and the all, greatest I, I, thing. I heard they also wore, wore the classic uniform. Yep. Like the movies. Old school. Old school yeah, pinstripes. Both teams. It was very, That's very cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, all right. Uh, football's back. We got some preseason action. Some quarterbacks look good. Some, you know, not so much. So, yeah. you know, kind of exciting. Uh, Justin Fields looks pretty good out there. I definitely think it won't be long before he takes over that starting job out there in Chicago. So, you know, kind of excited to see what he has coming through. Uh, Miami's quarterback, Tua Tugaloa, though, he, you know, he, he looks a little shaky <laughs> out there. I mean, you know, you got to, you know, I, I thought you're a Miami fan and you're watching this. I'm just saying, I don't know if I'm in love with it. So just, you know, put yeah. that out there. So, but there's a lot of good stuff. Um, I'm actually watching um, Hard Knocks. Yes, Hard Knocks is is the first episode that's, wasn't that's, very good. Did not like it. Um, I was not a fan. I not actually did to like the it. past ones. No. Yeah, but I actually did like it. Um, I I like um, what is it Zeke? Yeah, no, no, the quarterback. Dak. Um, Dak. Uh, what is? Oh yeah, yeah. I like his story. He actually had a good story. This is what I love about Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks gives you a personal level of. Employ uh, of all the players also gives you the personal level of people that that possibly get cut and you be like man he like his story was great and you build a relate yeah you build like a story with it and you're like holy shit yeah hard knocks is a cool show it, you know it's a shorter this season i think it's only four episodes and stuff and like i say it you started know, late yeah it's not <laughs> it's not looking as good as it as it did in the years past. I got to watch the second episode, so I'm not 100% sure. But uh, Summer League Basketball, Sacramento Kings won the Summer Ball League. Not okay. that that has anything to do with anything, but let's figure it out, throw it out there. What the fuck? You know, I mean, why not? Right? Let's talk about something else. Um, I don't know. Anything <laughs> else going on in the world of sports right now? I mean, I know I'm, I just paid another $150 for another fantasy league. So let's go. I'm, I'm getting ready. Draft season's how's, coming. Speaking of fantasy league, how's that going for you? Uh, it's nothing yet. It hasn't right even started yet, but no, I know, right? I no, know. I got a crazy, my main league though, you know, we all have our leagues. Anybody who plays fantasy football, you always know you have this thing called the main league. So my main league, we've already had like 80 to 90 trades. And we haven't even drafted yet. So I, that's just out of control. So, but you know, Nate's like, Nate, Nate's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I know like a little bit. And then once yeah, you guys no. were talking about the fantasy league, I was like, oh yeah, that's gone. Like, you yeah, lost yeah. me there. And he's like, 90 trades. The game hasn't even started. I was like, yeah, now we straight. He's like, yeah, trades? Okay. Wait a minute. Trades? Speaking of <laughs> trades. <laughs> exactly. That's why we're about to hop into it. Speaking Segway, of yeah. trades, you know, we're going to go ahead and get into our topic for the day, right? Um, and the title is Investing into Your Future. So with that being said, I think we're going to start off with the basic question. Okay. And I well, think first, before, before we actually start off the whole okay. segment, the whole everything, okay. we are not financial advisors. <laughs> I'm just putting a disclaimer out there. We're just saying things. What we're saying is personal things that we have invested on. Uh, and how is it going for us? Anything you're going to hear today is just how it's going for us individual. Um, we're just putting stuff out there, but we're not a financial advisor group. 
All right. So basically, you guys heard it here first. Whatever stocks uh, they recommend, go out and buy immediately. Buy heavy, <laughs> buy large. And when you Do lose all your money, we, it's not our fault because we're not financial providers. But, uh, you know, if you want to be a big shot exactly. like Messiah, you know, he, he'll give you some insider trading right here. Watch out. Mazzaia's but if you, become, if you make money off of it, um, listen. I want some royalties. I'll put this disclaimer out there. Mazaya <laughs> told me he started with like 13 cents and got in is up to like 13,000. So, I mean, it's something crazy like that. So, you know, yeah. take it for what you will. Yeah. I mean, Mazaya is a beast, but no. <laughs> it's timing is everything. Yeah. But we'll let, we'll let the expert talk about this. All right, so let's start. Before, <laughs> so, so sorry. Before. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. We'll let the, <laughs> we'll let Nate. <laughs> talk about this so let's let's start with this before we jump into any of that and before we get yeah, into like okay. the, the actual talk about it uh give people a little bit of your background and why this is you know talk a little bit real quick about your background talk a little bit about what you're doing on instagram right and talk a little okay. bit about why this interests you so much because i'm curious why do you have a passion for this okay so basically um if y'all don't know me um being is born 63 I just like to help people motivate others. So essentially what happened was I'm um, I'm studying information technology. I'm getting my bachelor's this year. So technology is basically all of that. And it was actually Mazaya who introduced me to like the crypto world a little bit. And then one of my friends on here, Shane, he was just saying, hey, you know, this is what you got to do. Do you do this, do that? And I was like, I don't know what's going on. So I was like, you know what? Just start buying. Whatever happens, happens. I hear people saying they put in money and <laughs> next day they wake up with a Lambo. And I was like, can I do that? Let me know. <laughs> so yeah. little by little over the year, like through the pandemic and all that, I just started reading more and more and more. And then I come to realize, okay, this isn't just waste money and try to gamble. There is something behind this and it's growing at a really fast rate. So with cryptocurrency, that's it's just data. That's all it is. I'm still working on how to explain it at a third grade level. I only brought it down to a middle school level, but it's all code and I'm data not gonna understand it then. So I can't, I can't do a middle school level. I'm just being honest, you know. Okay, so I get you in a few weeks, I'll get you again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's pretty much what it is. It's just data. That's all it is, just going back and forth. And what really intrigued me is it's really efficient. It's really fast. And the power behind it, it is throwing the movement. financial market. Yeah, it's throwing the financial market for a spin. And there's a lot of people that don't know about it. Like what I tell my friends, like Mazaya and now Shaq Monster, you're going to hear it, is we're still early. We're not as early as a few years ago, but we're early. And that's what it is. And yeah. if you want to break down crypto, essentially, it's just a piece of code where it says like, one zero the whole bunch of words and letters and all you're saying is okay i have this digital coin and mazaya is selling me something and i want that so i'm going to send him my data he's going to verify it once we both have the wallet or the address he gets it his currency i get the item and we just walk away that's it so fake that's money. like the most gotcha. basic i've been able to explain it so it's so fake what? money it's Fake money. It's not. It's not monopoly. <laughs> it's not monopoly. But is it not? It's, it's, it's a. It's a currency created that has no backing. It does have a backing. Yes though. and no. What's the backing? It does have a backing. There's there's actually a coin that has a backing to it. I'm still reading more into it, but the coin is called DAI or Dai, and if similar to stock or like pro, like exchanges, where if you want to do options and things like that they hold money on collateral so that's the crypto version of collateral that's what i've been reading so it does technically have a backing because the companies need money to be able to do these projects they can't just create it and go from there so what you'll hear in the in the stock market world is called ipo or initial public offering the crypto version is called ico which is initial coin offering so this it's kind of like it's checks and balance so they run parallel just a little bit different okay all right. Good to know. All right. So that brings me into my first question of the day. Then um, basically crypto versus stocks. Like I know you started to go into a little bit what it is, but you know, why would I invest in one versus the other? 
Is there any reasoning behind it? Like, you know, is there an advantage? Do you think, you know, maybe because I know you were saying before crypto sounds like it's, uh, and I mean, I'm not naive. I guess it is newer out there uh, compared Mm -hmm. to some other stuff, but is it better to get in on a new company early on or, or, you know, like, how do you feel about that? So when it comes to the crypto world with the companies, they have obviously they have a website, they have white papers, which essentially is just a document that explains their project. And some companies have a 50 page paper. Some people have like 20, 30, but it really comes down to it. And the project is what explains it. So some companies will have their project or the token And they'll say, hey, we want to help with the financial markets, or we want to implement better payment systems, or we want to be able to go into the medical field and things like that. There are some coins that are just meant to be that, like just utility. There's some where they want to be used as value. And then there's some called stable coin, which I just recently read. And essentially, a stable coin is a one-to-one ratio of a fiat currency, like the U.S. dollar the Japanese yen, so on and so forth. So there's different levels in the coin and each coin does something different. Okay. So then what, what do you prefer? Like if, if I'm somebody, let's say getting started and I'm not, I've never done this before. Okay. Where do you recommend me going? Do you recommend me starting with crypto? Do you recommend me starting with stocks and you know, what, like where, you know, you hear this stuff about penny stocks out there. Like where do you feel is a good place for somebody who has some discretionary cash and is looking to invest it. So I'll answer it. If I were to get a restart one year ago, if I was able to restart what I know now, stocks and crypto, they each have a pro and a con stock market. They do obviously, you know, it's by companies like Coca-Cola, Apple index funds, things like that. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's going to come down to your risk tolerance and just your appetite. If you're somebody who can handle really high risk, you can do crypto like Bitcoin, Ethereum. Doge is that wild one, which I do have some, but that's a little bit longer story. You can handle those. (laughs) If you do the stock market, if you just don't want to deal with all that pressure of, oh my gosh, is my money gone? There's nothing wrong with stock markets. I, I have shares of Tesla. And I have the S&P 500, like Blue Spy. I have both. And they each have a separate thing. What I would say to anybody who's never invested or don't even know what it is, read. I mean, reading is fundamental. Just even going on the Yahoo Finance, just learning how to understand what people talk about will put you ahead five years versus just saying, hey, my friend just bought Doge. Let me just throw 20 bucks and see what happens. Yeah. That would and be also- my, my advice. Yeah, and also the biggest difference between just stocks and, and uh, crypto is how volatile uh, mm-hmm. crypto is. Like, if you if if you listen, I always this is my first tip. I always tell people this: if you're planning to invest, first things first, pay off whatever you owe. And what I mean by that, I don't mean your 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 thirty year loan of your house. I don't mean your car. I don't mean that. Like, if you have credit card debt, take care of that. You have a um, any small debt. That you that, that you're paying off, pay that off first, and then start looking that extra cash because now you have extra cash. You can either do two things: you can put extra money in your house to pay it off faster, or take that money and invest it in a company that you did research on, right? In stocks or crypto. Now, the biggest thing with crypto because it's so volatile is that let's say today you put in a hundred dollars and you buy. A, a coin or something or some kind of crypto that coin could drop down so fast and you'll lose those hundred dollars. If you don't have the patience for it, put it this way, just real quick. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's not going to happen with, with crypto either way, mm-hmm. crypto or just stocks. It's not going to happen. It's long-term investments. The only people that know how to make money quick are the people that's been around for a long time or people that understand how the market moves. And that's a lot of research and years of, of, of things. So quick story. The reason why I got Nate into it is because one day I go, I go to, I'm at the break room. I see Nate with a notepad. Actually, no, he has this uh, surface. And I see this homework of, of this math problem. And only one math problem is taking him the whole <laughs> page. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, what are you studying? He's like, oh, I'm doing engineering. And, this, and I'm like, shit, okay. And it always stood 
And I, and I used to always have questions about math because I love numbers and I love math. So when I finally got into like um, stocks deep into it and it also got into crypto, I'm like, Nate, I think this is a great thing for you since you know your numbers and since numbers is great for you. And that's how I got him into it. Just because he, under, for me, he understands numbers and because he, he understands how it all works. I'm like, you should look into this. I didn't approach anybody else. I directly went to him because I know he knows numbers. And, and I created yeah, I a monster. <laughs> because yeah, my degree was in aerospace engineering, but unfortunately, I didn't get to finish it. So then I switched to IT. And yeah, was, I was, he just showed me it. And I was like, whatever. Like when he showed me it, I was like, okay, I'll look into it. And then little by little between the stock market, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like this goes up, this goes down. Okay, this has dividends. Damn, like this thing has been up for a year. Okay. So then they were saying, oh, why don't you trade? Like learn how to make money off of it. And I was like, well, I mean, how hard can it be? It was really hard. <laughs> I've, lost, <laughs> I've lost some money. Not, I'm not afraid to say I've lost cash. But it was funny because at that time I was studying calculus and it went into it between derivatives and all that. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. These two work together. Let me keep mm -hmm. going. And then I went into the stock market and I tried. I tried being a day trader. Kind of worked, kind of didn't. I just, there was just so much psych psychological pressure on it. Like my friend just stayed in the chat. I just, yeah, I couldn't I was, I was about to say every that, day. Yeah. I was like, no, I can't deal with this. Like I'm done. So I took a break. And then I just kept looking into the crypto world and I was like, I don't understand all these tokens, all these coins. I kept reading. And then one day between Mazaya, my friends, it just hit me. And I was like, oh, whoa, 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 hold up. This isn't a game anymore. We're not 2013. We're 2021. And what we're, what's about to happen is all these tokens and coins are going to push the entire world in a new direction. And then I was just reading it more into it. I'm learning more about blockchain, how that works, how the coding works, how some companies can get hacked into, which they had one from the Poly Network. That was insane. And I just been reading every single day. Like, Check Monster, bro, what, what's about to happen is no joke. All right. I'm going to right start now. sending me some articles and stuff then because I got to start getting in <laughs> on it because Lord knows I, you know, I was going to buy in at a certain time with some crypto and I, I didn't, I hesitated, then I did buy into some and, you know, I'm down, you know, I'm down on that end. I'm, I'm up, I'm up on my stock end, but I'm down on my crypto end. Cause I did both right. Is I, I made some major investments. I even had a reverse split just happen on me that, that they cashed me out, which pissed me off. Dang. I, had, <laughs> I had GE, I had GE and they went from, they went to a eight to one share, uh, reverse split, reverse split. Yeah. Dang. So what happened was, is if you had eight shares, they made it one. So I guess, I, I don't know. I thought I had eight shares. Maybe I didn't, I had like 7.5. So they cashed me out and gave me my money. So I was a little pissed off about that whole thing. So, but what are you going to do? Funny. Yeah. yeah but, it happens. Yeah. So, yeah, well, but you that, can't go that, into that, it if you're afraid part to lose the, money though. I will say. Yeah, that. that's also part of the experience, right? You have to, mm -hmm. if you look into it, most, like most investors do years of research before they actually start making money, Right. I actually heard mm -hmm. Warren Buffett uh, make a speech about it, actually uh, talk about it. And one of the things that he said that he used to do is he checks on everything. The CEO, background on CEO, background on the company, how long has it been out before he even makes an initial investment. Now, you're talking about Warren Buffett. He makes billion dollar investments or multi-million dollar investments. So obviously mm -hmm. he's going to look into those research. But those are the guys like he's look how deep he gets into this. He usually goes to McDonald's and buys a breakfast. The amount of money of breakfast, or the amount of money determines what type of breakfast he's going to get, right? So his wife gives him um, money to go. He goes through the drive-thru. He reads before he's, he actually goes to go get his breakfast. He goes through the papers. He checks. If the market is down, he changes his, his, his option of what he's going to get for breakfast. And you're talking about sense in, 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 in what he changes. And you're like, damn, this guy's worth $40 billion. And that's the, the, the decision he makes when he's going through a McDonald's breakfast menu in the morning. Hey, man. Yeah, that, it's it's it crazy. Takes, it's, that's, that's how I've important it is to him. That's how important it is to him. If the market you, is up, he gets the regular hmm. breakfast. If the market is down, he, go, he, he, he goes to the under 
the breakfast that he normally doesn't get just to save the sense. That's what you got to do. Like I used a similar strategy with my crypto account. I would transfer like 50 bucks or a hundred dollars into the account. Like just this week I transferred 50 and I was like, man, I'm going to take this 50 and I'm going to buy this token. No questions asked. And I woke up with a horrible headache. And I was like, you know what? I could care less about this account today. And the coin I was <laughs> tracking, um, it's a utility coin uh, from crypto.com, the Creo coin. And it was just yeah. exploding. And I was like, you know what? It's going up. I'll just deal with it later. I really don't care. And then I had a chance to just like l- relax and actually read yesterday. And I was like, oh, oh cool. Like it, it dropped a little bit. All right, now I'm going to buy this coin. And then I spent my 50 bucks on it, no questions asked. And then it kept going down again. And I was like, man, I should wait like two more minutes. <laughs> but I didn't care. That's how that, <laughs> that's how that crypto goes. That coin. Yeah. But that's what yeah. we mean and that I mean, I didn't crypto care, is more like, volatile. Yeah. So yeah. I guess. And, I, and it was chill. Like it went down a little bit. What happened? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You can finish. Oh, no. I was going to say, like, each coin I have has a different plan and a different goal, kind of like my portfolio in the stock market. Like Dogecoin, I just spent like, I think I spent like $100 or 200 in a few months ago. And I was, I went up, it went super high. I could have cashed out when it reached all time high at the 70 cents. I didn't for whatever reason. And I'm still holding it. That's just whatever. Like I could care less. My big hitter is Ethereum. I have one full Ethereum token that I've been holding ever since $1,600. And I mean, it's just been back and forth, back and forth. That has a different project. And then now with my other account, I actually have the other altcoins. Oh, and altcoin is just an alternative coin that's not Bitcoin. That's pretty much what it means. Mm-hmm. That that portfolio's job is to get as high as it can so I could transfer it to Bitcoin. That's all I needed to do. And then same thing with the stock market. I have the S&P tracker that just do, does this thing. I have my Tesla shares. That does another job. And then I have another gamble in there that has another job. So they each have a role in what I needed to do. So so, so diversity is a very big key, right? So while yeah. one sector, you know, try to, you know, spread your money where if one sector goes up, the other one, well, if one sector goes down, there's another, the other sector goes up and that's how they balance. That's how you balance your loss, right? You limit your loss. Mm-hmm. So that same thing with crypto. But the thing is that with crypto right now is the biggest money maker right now there's only three big names out there um ethereum bitcoin and i believe litecoin right they're the biggest ones but there's up and kind of okay there's well, there number three got changed it got flipped to cardano actually. oh yeah so that's what i'm saying i, I wasn't actually use cardano as a as an up and coming right so cardano's yeah. making this move up there you also have dogecoin but dogecoin is is considered like a a, a people's coin right uh, the mm-hmm. reason why it's considered the people's coin is it has a lot of backing from people that billionaires that people trust. Two examples would be Elon Musk and uh, Mark Cuban. Those guys are backing up. They're on their Twitter, like crypto, crypto, this crypto, that. I mean, um, Dogecoin, this Dogecoin, that, 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 that coin just fluctuates like crazy. And I always say, man, the power these guys have, all they do is a mention and the coin goes from like 23 cents to like 30 cents immediately. And people just like buying in, buying in, buying in. And it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. It no, is, for sure. It's insane. So f- no, it's no. not for the faint of heart. No. <laughs> no, it's guess- not. You have to you have to really understand what you're doing. And sorry to cut you off. No, concert. you're good. You're good. But what I tell all my friends, because they always tell me, oh, which coin should I buy? Should I do this? Should I do that? Listen, like, this world is no joke. I, I'll tell you from personal experience, I remember putting in two grand on a coin, and that went down to a thousand in two days. And I was like, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> That's exactly what happened what to me. What are we about to do? Yep. That's exactly. Me listen, too, I'm down, I'm down at least a G on... On a on a coin, I bought in when it, like I want I where I was gonna buy it in, I didn't do it, and then I hesitated, I hesitated, and then I got to the point where it looked like it was leveling out. I'm like, screw it, I'm gonna buy in. The net like the next day, I think it just plummeted, and it went back down yeah. to around the area that I was gonna buy in originally. That's how bad it went down, and I lost half my money. Um, but at that point, like all you can do is sit it out. Like I, you know, it's, so, it's got to go back up at some point, right? Like, what you? Th- 
what you're doing is called, is, well, there's a term we use on, uh, I've been reading on, on Reddit a lot, and on Wall Street, on Wall, Wall Street Bets. It's basically, it's called diamond hands. So I use that term a lot. <laughs> when you're basically just holding on and holding on to that shit, right? Because I, I, I also made, uh, investments on I use Litecoin as a, as as an example. Litecoin, I was like, I, I kind of like this coin, man. This is a this is not Ethereum and it's not Bitcoin. It's as a good price point. I bought it when it was at peak at that time. I bought two coins. I had to sell some of my stocks on 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 Fidelity, just regular stocks. Just bought two coins, cost me six hundred dollars, at three hundred dollars a piece. Oh, I remember that like, conversation. That shit was like, <laughs> I was like, holy shit. <laughs> it's like, damn. So I'm yeah. like, right now, I'm just holding on to that shit. That's like, all it is. Go up. I know. <laughs> I remember Mosiah telling me that. I was like, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's a crazy ride. And the way it I'm is. viewing cryptocurrency is I'm not looking at it for the next two years. I'm trying to get to the next 10 years. Yes. Because there's... There's a whole bunch of companies and countries out there. Like, for example, India is trying to make a digital rupee of their currency. Uh, China has their own issues with it. We don't, I don't really get into it too much. Um, Japan is trying to, from what I remember, there's just a whole bunch of countries trying to get into this world. And it's only a matter of time before you do it in terms of the whole world. One quote I read, I forgot where it was, but they were saying how when the internet was getting big around the 1990s, went to the 2000s, everybody was skeptic about it. But look where we are now. Everyone uses yep. it. And they're mm-hmm. saying history is trying to repeat itself with crypto. The, the dot-com where, boom, yeah. Yeah, they're try- it's going to repeat itself where at some point it's going to happen where you have to use it regardless. So that's how I saw it. Then I read more into it. Um, Sheck Monster, so what you want to read is stable coins. That's what you want to read more. I think you'll understand that a little bit easier. Than just like Bitcoin and all the gambles and all the penny coins and, or as they call it, the shit coins. Like if you read <laughs> if you read stable coins, you'll understand it a lot more. It'll be easier. Written down. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Cool. So no. let me get into the next part of this conversation that I want to get into, which is, um, excuse me, I'm hitting the wrong button there. Um, <laughs> Long term versus short term, right? When people are investing, do, do you like to mix it up? Do you think it's better to, you know, go for a long-term versus a short-term investment? Like, what are your thoughts about that? And, and I know you've talked a little bit about, like, 10-year plans and different things, but, you know, what, what is your feeling about investing long-term versus short-term? So I actually use that with a, a kind of like an experiment I'm on. On one of my other stock accounts through Weeble, they actually gave me a paper account. So you just paper trade and they gave me a million dollars. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to show everybody I'm going to make a million dollars. And five minutes into it, I lost 40 grand. And I was like, okay. <laughs> we are not doing this right. Like, what is going on here? Yeah. So then I'm actually using that for two reasons, long-term and short-term. Um, to my long-term is the S&P and Tesla because I want to see what happens if I actually hold the way I want to. And then I have other companies that are short-term, like Starbucks, Coinbase. The, those I plan to get rid of within a few years. But I want to see what happens if I let it go after a year. If it went up, cool. How much did I make? And if it went down, how much can I maintain to lose in relation to the long-term? It's going to come down to your goal. Obviously, if you go long-term, you win regardless, unless it's a really bad company. But to beat, but, yeah. yeah, like that. And um, also, like any companies under bankruptcy, those you kind of want to stay away from because if Good they coffee. declare it, then that's it. Yeah, like all the shares are gone. So Bro. long term is really the goal. If you just want to play it safe, the S&P 500 that tracks the 500 top companies in the U.S., that you can't lose to it. It'll fluctuate every year. But if you check its history pattern, it always goes up. And if you just throw like a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars a month it'll go up i actually did an experiment with that last year and i ended up and averaging out like 30 percent overall and i was like cool so it does work it's going to come down to your strategy if you are trying to get rich quick you're going to lose regardless but if you mm-hmm. actually want to build well long term is the is the game 
you got to go for at least five years if that's the route you go short term you gotta you basically you just gotta pray you get lucky and hope it just skyrockets so or give just me pick the right company that does it so give me your top three long-term recommendations obviously once again we're not saying anybody to go out and do this right we're not advocating mm-hmm. to go buy um the spf 500 or whatever it was that sounds like a sunscreen <laughs> so i probably said that wrong um <laughs> smp smp yeah, spf yeah. 500 you know it's <laughs> listen you guys are in florida that sun's brutal out there it is bro yeah, boy so uh we're, so we're not we're not advocating for any of this it, it's just to give people an idea of what to start to look at, right? Because I think that's the important thing to take away is yeah. whatever he's about to recommend, he's not saying you should go buy because, oh, they're great long-term investments. These are things that you need to read about and, and, and learn about because it may be the right long-term investment for you, but it doesn't mean go do it. So who would you, like, if you're, for instance, if you're talking to me, right? And I'm curious, mm-hmm. like, because, you know, I got some discretionary cash because my credit cards are in check, you know, I don't have a car payment currently. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing some things on the back end with some other properties and stuff. So where would you tell me if I was like, hey, man, I'm looking to, you know, invest, let's say $1,000 long-term investment. I want to split up between three three stocks, three properties. You know, wh- what would you recommend for somebody like me? Well, it wouldn't be that easy of a recommendation. We have to see where your market is, like, do you want to deal with technology? Do you just want to deal with food and beverage, retail? Well, that's what I'm saying. I guess I do, I, I'm yeah. looking for three. So I'd like to diversify, right? I'd like to maybe so, get a technology. Okay. If you like, I would like one of each in order to kind of diversify my, my thing. I'm not looking to put, like I say, I'm looking to, you know, about 300, I guess 300, 300, 300 or 350, 350, 350. Right. Um, and so like in those categories and stuff, where do you, where do you see, you know, recommendations? Is it going with the big names? Like if you're gonna go technology, like for instance, go Apple, right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. they're continually always trending in the right direction and stuff like that. Um, like, how do you feel about stuff like that? So if the way I would say is to hit all three, you want to hit an index fund like the S&P. Okay. That, yeah. So that like SPY. ETFs. That's I, I, yep. Yeah, ETF as well. My fault. Um, you just hit S&P 500. You just put 300 there. You just don't even look at it at a thousand. Then I'm really, I'm a bull on Tesla. I don't care what anybody says. Um, that's who I firmly believe is going to win the uh-huh. EV race into the next decade. So that's just, that's just on me. And then if you want to go with Apple, Apple is really good when it comes to dividend payments. They just, they're over 2 million in market cap. I mean, if they just keep 2 million or 2 trillion, 2 trillion. Yeah. Yeah. 2 trillion. And I could see them hit 3 trillion in like seven years because they're trying new things and they are trying to do the Apple car. And if that succeeds, that will actually help them get to the three trillion market. So, so if yeah. you had to pick three, it would be those three. So let me ask you this then: Do you are you doing the Apple one and the Tesla one together? Because if Apple does a car, it could bring down the Tes. It could start to compete with the Tesla. You think or no. not so much? Hell no, no, no. it won't be. Yeah. This, this is well, the reason why I chose those two. Yeah, is so Tesla obviously they're known for making cars. They're working on their own battery. They do a lot more than just those two. Apple, if you think about it, how many people buy Apple phones and how many people pay for Apple Music? And then anytime they have a new product like the AirTags and the MacBooks and their subscriptions, we, well, not just we, but a lot of people use it. So you know it's going to keep growing overall. It may not grow every single quarter, but think about it. When the new iPhone comes out, a lot of people are going to buy it. And the way they like to store their music through Apple Music, so people keep paying for that. We're uh, switching to a streaming-based viewing with movies. Apple TV has that. So they have a really big customer base, and that's why I chose that. Well, that, but I guess that's where my question three. comes in about the Apple car, right? Because, um, mm-hmm. and, and tell me if I'm wrong, but I got the impression the Apple car is supposed to be a competitor to Tesla, is it not? It is, but I don't see it as such because... But because here's what we go back to, right? Because this is, in the, in, and then I'll let you go off a little bit about it, but yeah. when I'm when I'm... When I think about Apple, like you said, it's about the brand, right? People are buying mm-hmm. into 
that brand, that that way of life, right? I mean, they Apple Air, uh, like even AirPlay is on Sony TVs, different things like that. Like they're integrated everywhere. Apple Home Kit, so you can integrate your security and all that. So you got Tesla who has self driving capabilities and stuff. Well, Apple already has its own mapping system, right? Yeah. They, they partner with Neo for that. Okay, I'm just saying, yeah. but they have their own mapping system. So one of the things they talk about for automated vehicles and stuff is the Google is Google Maps and stuff like that. Well, Apple already has their own integ- uh, own system. They're gonna be able to integrate into the car. Now, also, what's the device that's in a Tesla? Isn't it an iPad? Pretty much. It's a tablet, but it's not an yeah. iPad. It's just, okay, yeah, it's just a tablet. Well, they, there you go. But Apple now puts their own tablet in their own car, right? You already have Apple CarPlay, which is going to be in that car then, right? And so you're going to literally walk into a car that's the same ecosystem as your house. That I think that is going to be enticing to people to start to look at that as a viable option. If the vehicle is up to snuff, mind you, this is all an assumption on that part. But mm-hmm. if, I'm a, if I got nothing but Apple in my life and I can either get the same equivalent of car between Apple and Tesla... Why would I buy Tesla over Apple when so literally he, he, what, I'm, what I'm doing at my house is walking into my car with me? Here's my two cents on that. And to Apple, well, they're two different companies, right? Apple is mostly um, retail. Um, they build a culture around um, well, the, the things we use. They're not right? retail, right? They, so that's where you got to be they, careful. But Apple, they do have a retail. Yes, they do have a retail. But understand what the, they're, they're engineering, right? They engineer... Yeah, yeah devices and they sold them through a retail because that's like saying yeah. tesla is a car company is like a, a car a car lot right that's what you're saying because no, yes, no. they have car lots but they're not a car lot no apple's not but that's a retail what i was gonna tell store. you they did they, 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 they two different they're they're in the technology field uh technology sector but they're two different types of companies in a sense how they work right so um elon musk and tesla have spacex uh the tesla cars and they have the batteries they're building the solar panels they have all this Right, that has nothing to do with like um, what Apple does. The biggest difference uh, between those two companies is where they're going and where their mission is. Right? Um, obviously, Elon Musk. And when you invest in a company, you want to invest in their mission. If you believe in their mission, mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing you got to look for. If you don't believe in a company's mission, do not put your money in it because you're not. You, that's you, you're investing in something you don't believe in. Right? Exactly. So um, obviously, Apple is Apple. Whatever Apple does, because of the cult following, it becomes good, right? But um, Tesla is thinking, Tesla in, in its own, right? Remember, people used to think Tesla was just a, a, car, a car company. And Tesla is not a car company. When um, I think it was, it was called, uh, it was on Kramer. He, when he made the announcement, he said, the, the mistake that people make with Tesla is they think they're a car company, but they're actually a tech company. The minute he finished that sentence, right after that, Tesla stocks went from 200, and I watched it. I'm like, shit, I'm kicking myself because I didn't catch it on time. From 200 to like 1,000 by the end of that year. Almost at 1,000 by the end of that year. Just out of that statement. Um, and so you so, don't, but you don't think Apple is going in that direction? They're already, they're the, making, so think about it. They're making their own processing chips, right? So yeah. they're no longer outsourcing it. Right? Yeah, they will. What do you mean? They will. They will. They're going. They might go into a car, which it looks like they are. Because well, I'm saying they're they're, they're already in the. They've already started the stages of a tech company. If you're making processors and all this other stuff, you're becoming a tech company, right? So to sit there and say like, yeah, they're not a car. Tesla's not a car company. They're a tech company. Apple's not a retail company. They're not a Best Buy. They're not a Walmart. They no, make, they're not. What? They're not. They're not uh, like. Yeah. So that's what I'm well, saying. So they're a tech they have, company. Yeah. They. 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 Yes. They are a tech company, but like, there. There's two different missions between those two companies. Yeah. Like, of course. That's every what, company that's what I'm has. A, say. But that, I know. I get it. But you. You say things sometimes that are just so like asinine and simple. Yeah. But name me any company that has the same mission. Go ahead. Give okay, me one. So maybe maybe I can explain Walmart it this way. and Best so, Buy. They don't have the same mission. <laughs> yes, they do. No, they so, don't. I mean, the way the way I feel like Apple's car project I'm, won't be as big as Tesla's is because the amount of resources Tesla's putting into this project 
their their biggest thing is going to be the full self driving system. What Tesla wants to do with it is uh, something called a robo taxi. So it's basically Uber without cars. That's what it is, and that's what that's drivers. why I believe. Yeah, exactly. I say, how do you that's Uber without a car? <laughs> like, how the hell am I getting there? I meant like, to say Uber with. A... I was like, wait a minute, how does that happen? I was like, that's why I just want to make sure everybody's on the same the, page. Here, like, bro, that's a little awkward. Let me, let Beat me, me let up, Scotty. Let me retract. So that <laughs> system is trying to be Uber without drivers, and it's going to work under the five G network across the U.S. And basically, you can actually have your Tesla pick up people, drive them to the location. And let it work while you're either working or doing other stuff. Yes, Sleeping Apple home, yeah. can work on their system. They can integrate it and all that. It's going to come down to who has full self-driving. If Apple doesn't do that, then cool. They have a nice tech piece of a car, but you don't have an automotive or an autonomous vehicle. And those are the two different things that people don't get when they say, oh, Apple's car is going to work. It's You're not seeing the bigger picture. Tesla has a very big project, and that's why I'm seeing them as the winner of this whole thing. So this if is you, hmm? this is why I disagree, though, right? Um, okay. So Apple Apple is a huge phone company, correct? Would you say yeah. like like I'm not? I know they're not number one worldwide. I don't think they're they're like no. Yeah, um, the, the Android is the Android. Well, Android doesn't count. Is it? It's like you know, Samsung, Motorola, like you know, whatever. But uh, we're talking about that's an operating system, not a phone, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but they're not the. But biggest. that operating system is bigger than I- iOS. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So what I guess what I'm trying to say though is this: when it comes to the phone, and, and you've you're familiar with this, what innovation has Apple brought to the phone since they came out with the iPhone? In terms of like just everything, anything in general, anything, right? I mean, because have- if you think about it, right, mm-hmm. Samsung went bigger before them, did they not? Mm-hmm. Right, Apple waited to go bigger, then Samsung went back to some small, a couple smaller devices. Apple followed back down with some like so. A lot of the things that have been out in that industry were put out by people before Apple. So waterproofing their device, Samsung had waterproofing devices long before Apple did it, right? So the, their phones weren't as weren't water resistant or waterproof where you could, you know, that was part of the commercial. I remember little Wayne dropping the phone in the fish tank and stuff like that because yeah, Apple, that yeah, cause Apple couldn't do it, but Apple may not be the first to do it, but Apple waits until they're the damn best at it. That that's so, yeah, I get what you're saying about the car thing, right? So yeah, mm-hmm. they're going to beat them to that race. But when we're talking about long-term, 20 years from now, Apple will be just side by side with them. If not, a, if I mean, I'm not going to say that they're is... going to be the leader, but what I'm saying is it's just going to be the same because they're not going to be the first. They're going to let them get beat them to the race. And then they're going to take upon, they're going to re engineer what they're doing to try to make it better or just as good for the Apple person. That I can guarantee. That's the faith I have in that in that yeah. company. That so yeah, I'm not talking about company. ten years from now. I'm talking about twenty five years from now. Apple's vehicle will be just as autonomous as Tesla. Now, sure, Tesla will shoot up quicker, but in the long run, who's more sustainable, right? Because the one thing I don't agree with the mission is the money they're spending with this company to do these things in space. That I just don't know how viable it's going to be. Where where is your profit gonna come from? Well, yeah, the space mission that's from SpaceX, so it won't be off of Tesla. No, so but you he, have to but, see it as two Mazzaia, different things. Mazaya kind of brought that in as part of that company, right? And, and it stuff. Is, yeah. See, he's saying yeah. it is, but he, Nate's saying it's not. It's a, a no, separate it, entity because it's because Elon Musk is the CEO of all the companies, yeah, but it's different sub sectors. So correct. Tesla is going to be working on obviously the car and the batteries. Yep. SpaceX is all about just going to space. And that's the difference with Apple. With Apple, you're buying into everything, right? So you're buying into, hey, man, a phone launch came out, right? So that's going to help them. Oh, a new computer came out. A new tablet came out. A new car came out. All these things that are coming out are helping the Apple business where Tesla, what are they like? I mean, you, you start to get to a point where it starts to slow down a little bit. Like they've been working on this on just their their electric car for how long now well they've been working on their electric car for years but then what they did was i think it's been a lot yeah yeah, i mean this isn't like a year's thing this 
I mean, how long has Tesla been out? And then to add probably 10 years in the making of the battery for like, you know what I'm saying? This that's the biggest, a- that's the biggest, I think that's their biggest, right now, their biggest focus is on the battery. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the battery and their charging station. So yeah. basically they took the Model S, made as much as they could on that one, made different models from the yep. Model 3, yeah. the Model X and all that. So now they realize, okay, it's the battery that's going to be what propels forward because they can supply their own batteries. They don't have to outsource it. They don't have to buy from other people. Yep. And now with their charging station, it used to be just Tesla cars, but now they're allowing other EVs mm-hmm. to be charging with it. So they've been growing beyond it just besides the car. It's the little things that are making it. So well, you, you have a that's... valid point with Apple. Yeah. It's just, again, two different things. And that's just, I mean, that's just how I see it. And there's nothing wrong with the Apple project. You know, I get it. They can do it. They have the resources. Just from my, from me looking at it, I don't see it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. I think that's where Tesla needs to really uh, start to think about investing in the future is charging stations. Because if you make charging stations that, at, like, for instance, an Apple car, a Ford car, a Chevy car, that all these new electric, ca- all these electric cars can charge at, think about it. You could take a cut off of all of those charges, right? Because they're your stations. You can literally become the net, like a gas, an oil company for electric. Well, I think that's yeah. what they focus. They, that's they, what they they're doing. Yeah, on there's, yeah. Yeah. Tesla is focusing on their superchargers. because It's called the supercharger network. They uploaded, I forgot how many it was in China last year because of the demand for that vehicle over there was. And then of course, all the other competition from Neo and Lee Otto. So they've been going really heavy on this charging station network that they have, if I'm not mistaken, two or three factories just on charging stations. Yeah. That's all they have. I'm telling you, that's that's where I think that's where their real business is going to be if they're talking about long-term sustainability. Because once again, if Apple and these other companies start to compete, which I, I'm a believer they could, I'm not saying they will, but I think they could absolutely in, in a certain amount of time be just as, as relevant as the, as Tesla, because you're never, there's never anybody to like, there's no monopoly in that stuff. Right. I'm sorry. There just isn't, I get, you're going to be the first one to do it, but Ford was the first one to get a motor vehicle. And last time I checked, not everybody's running out to go buy a Ford now, you know, a hundred years later, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, Tesla may be first. It doesn't mean they're going to be the best. And so I believe there's going to be companies out there, Google and Apple and Amazon, and these types of companies will get out there and they will do it, right? And they will well, do the, it better. So what, what what Nate mentioned earlier about the the car, the companies that are doing, uh, well, the cars that are like a taxi, the Uber taxis and all that, that shit's already on testing out there in California. A lot of that shit's already been, been testing where yeah. the, the self-driving cars. Um, I think the reason why I invested in Neo. Um, it's because I was reading this article, which is another EV company, but in China, based in China. Um, the reason why I invested, and I caught them early, which is good, you know, blessings. Uh, and I caught them early was because they partnered, the article I was reading is they partnered up with Apple to do the maps. And Apple was actually running um, their, their, their um, the way the maps go and their, their, their operating system. And they're actually just us, uh, autonomous cars. They're like taxis. For yeah, right? I'm Apple? reading about that too. No, Neil. Which is the so company, Apple? Which the company Apple's with? Yes. So once Apple, again, they're and, already on. That's my point. They're already on that's their what I'm way. They, there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They they they're working and they're the just problem, partnering. I think the what thing, they're doing though. is testing out their map system. I, I think that's it. what they're doing. Here's the problem, though, right? Um, I don't believe autonomous vehicles are a viable option unless it's a, and, and, and we're starting to run low on time. So, you know, I'll just try to get these last points in, but I don't see it, autonomous vehicles being a viable option unless every vehicle on the road is autonomous. You cannot put human drivers on the road with autonomous vehicles and expect there not to be an issue. What happens to that first accident and that first death for the person who's in the autonomous vehicle? That's right? already happened. And yeah, what was the lawsuit? Exactly. Oh, well, we don't know. That part, we don't, we know, don't know. That's my the, point. The accidents already happened. The self-driving cars, accidents already happened. When, I remember when Tesla first came out, one of the biggest, one of the biggest, one of the accidents that got um, put on the article was uh, Tesla could not read, could not dif- differentiate a truck that's white, like a white paint trailer, 
and in the road. So it ran. The guy was self driving. I guess he. I don't know what happened, but he the the, the Tesla car went right into the, the the trailer, and the guy died. Yeah. Because it couldn't it couldn't identify it. So, but I I think that's where again. Since we're talking about investments, that's companies that created the LIDAR, right? L-I-D-R, um, company LIDAR. that reads yeah. LIDAR, yeah. Uh, yeah. That reads, you know, that maps out camera system that maps out and it, different, and it reads out people what's out there. So that's another thing you can look into, stuff like that. Companies that create stuff like that and technology of that. Um, yeah. Circuit boards and all that. But either way, Tesla and Apple, they're both in the same sector. You can invest no, on no, any of one of those companies. The difference is Apple's going to cost you $170. Tesla's going <laughs> to cost you $600, $700 a share. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, so it's about that time to get into the, you know, our last segment of the night because we got to start wrapping it up. Uh, you know, we started to get a little long. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's kick it. Gosh, that intro is just so bad. I just, every time I see it, I just want to cringe. Uh, anyway, so let's go ahead. We got another, uh, we got somebody who wants to, you know, do a little FOH. They sent it in to us, as you guys can all do. All you have to do is email us at generationshock2020 at gmail.com. Leave us a link to your video and we can upload it and go ahead and get it played on here. Don't forget also hashtag GSFOH. Make sure you're talking that up and throwing that out there to the world. But without further ado, let's go ahead and let's hear this uh, FOH. Hello, my fuck out of here is for Chef Monster and Messiah. Um, I will not take responsibility for the botched topic of body modifications last week. I was talking about extreme body modifications, um, which I sent all the things to search to Messiah, so I don't know if you're a little tipsy when you read it and didn't understand what I was talking about. Um, however, I could have sent it to Chef Monster, but he doesn't really read my messages or respond. So, I kind of have to put the blame on both of you for that. So, um, I love you guys. I love the show, but I kind of have to say fuck out of here. You botched that one. All right. Oh, man, that was brutal. We just got yeah, ripped she apart. Call, she, yeah, she called us Ooh. out. Oh, that. yeah. She <laughs> called us out big time. So, you know, basically we, we take our first, you know, viewer – you know, and I blame Messiah this whole thing. Yeah, first viewer yeah, suggestion, <laughs> and we put make an episode of it just to sit there and get ridiculed about how Messiah screwed it up because he didn't give me enough detail. So, and in my defense, I don't go onto social media like that. I am not. I'm just gonna put it. There. I'm not a big social media guy. I don't. I don't like it. I don't believe in it. I'm old school. I come from an older time. You know, I don't love it. I'll go on there every now and then to watch a dumb video or check some things out. So that's why I don't I don't stay up to tune with, you know, Phoenix Bourne's Instagram page like I might want to and all the stuff he puts out. Because, I mean, when I'm on there, I'll see it and I'll listen, but I just don't do that stuff. So, yeah, if you if you hit me up that way, I'll, I apologize. I, I don't respond that well or that often. So, sorry. <laughs> you, got a, you got any FOH, Nate? Any what? FOH. F-O-H. I feel like, nah, I've been chilling. Um, I, actually, no, yeah, I do, I do. Hold up. Yeah, so last week, I was in training for my new job, and I was flying to Missouri. It was chill. The airport was fine. Um, I just fell asleep. I didn't really care. I get to the hotel, and I go ahead and check in, and I'm just like, all right, you know, I'm here to check in. I'm here for a business trip. And like, all right, cool. What's your name? And I was like, okay, well, you know, my name is Nathaniel Sanchez and all that. And they're like, oh, well, our system is down. We need you to enter your card info. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just write it down. I don't really care. I write it down. And he goes, all right, here's your room number. You go ahead and go to your room. And I got a bet. So, I mean, I've been carrying my luggage all day. And I just want to just lay down because of the long trip. And I put the key in and it's not opening. I was like, this makes no sense. Like, the key should open. has a sensor. Sensor went green. I open the door. I drop off the bag. I lay down. Call it day for two minutes i'm like yo this doesn't want to open i'm like you know what fuck it i'm busting this door open so i put the sensor in and i broke it open and all i see is a guy like yo what are you doing 
And I was like, what do you mean what I'm doing? This is my room. And he goes, no, this is my room. And I was like, really? Like, I'm pretty sure I just checked in. And he goes, no, I just checked in a few days ago. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, whatever. So I went back down. <laughs> and double I booked the you. <laughs> and I was like, hey, there's a dude in my room. And he was like, oh, somebody did check in your room. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, Dude, and you busted head, the like, door. Yeah, and I mean, I said it in my head, because like, I get it, you know, everybody was over at work or whatever. But I'm thinking, okay, like if somebody already checked in, like how did that happen? So like, whatever. And then the guy's like, oh, what room did you have? And I was like, well, I had room six, six for teen or whatever. And he goes, oh yeah, you had the king size bed, right? And I was like, yes, I did, bro king size bed make sure it hit <laughs> so <laughs> i get the key and i'm like yo i'm so over the his bag i finally get to my room and i was like oh the king size bed the door opens thank you god <laughs> and i just went to sleep it was just so funny because i was like i've never had that experience in my life where it's the wrong room and i'm over here like yo i'm not trying to fight this dude right now i just got off this flight let me just go back down and figure this out. So, yeah, that's my moment. It was fun, though, but yeah, it was so annoying. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. That sucks. That's that's rough. I've, I've traveled before, and, you know, when those keys don't start working and stuff, and you're just like, dude, I just want to get the fuck in my room. That's it. Like Exactly. Just, you know, yeah. Like, the dude, you should have seen his face. His face was like, what? And I was like... <laughs> Yo, what's up? Like, I'm trying to be. <laughs> this guy's like, out here my room. fight. Like, yo, <laughs> yeah. bro, this is a mob room now. And you know yeah. what? If I see somebody break my door open at a hotel, I'm like, all right, yeah, I am messing with this dude. You know what? Take the fucking room. Give my, let me get my stuff. I'll go find a new room. I hope you like my sweaty nut sheets that you got, though. So I'm out. <laughs> oh, <That's> boy. <laughs> so, um, my fuck out of here is going to be this, right? Obviously, we're in Florida. Obviously, there's a new Delta variant out there of COVID. Um, and people are just out there just like, like I have fi- announcement. I finally got my first shot. Um, so, like, I was arguing, not arguing. I was talking to this guy. And he was like, oh, I, I just don't believe it's, it's, this is real. and it's, This is probably still the government trying to control you. I'm like, bruh. This is the second. This is a. This is actually a, a a mutation. This is a Delta variant. You told me. You you're telling me yourself. Uh, long story short, you're telling me yourself that you didn't believe in the first one, and then you caught it, and then you're like, shit, this is real. And now you be, now you're telling me that the Delta is fake. I go, I don't get it. Like, fuck out of here with that shit. You and he's like, oh, if we're gonna die, we're gonna die. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to tell you this. And he's like, what? That statement is full of shit. And he's like, why do you say that? I'm like, because everybody says if you're going to die, you're going to die. Until the moment they get that news or they actually are dying. And when they're dying, they're like, shit, I don't want to go now. So and it's never when you're going to die, you're going to die. So fuck out of here with that bullshit. Put your mask on and then, you know, (laughs) let's go on with our day. (laughs) Fuck out of here with that shit. How are you going to say the first one you thought it was fake? And then you caught it, and then, oh shit, this shit is real. Now you're gonna say the Delta variant is fake? Like what? How how many shit? How many times are you gonna hit yourself against the wall to realize this shit is not gonna open? All right, so let me go through mine real quick, and that way we can get we can wrap up this show because we got to get things wrapped up. All right, so um, mine is, is that we we talk about a lot of things in this show every week, and uh, I, I know because it's a weekly show. Sometimes when you're the age of Mazai, your memory starts to go, right? And you don't uh, realize do <laughs> you don't realize you start to repeat certain things that you've already <laughs> talked about. So like, this this week, my fuck out of here is to you, Mazaya. Fuck out of here. This is not the first time you've talked about this exact subject on here for a fuck out of here, bro. Okay. You've talked about the issue with people that, you know, that come to your job and the whole COVID argument and everything else come to me with something new or fuck out of here with it because I'm tired of hearing the same old <laughs> shit from you, bro. That's all I'm going to say. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Cause that's not the first time we've heard you rant about your little COVID shit. In the person, I have to, I have to rant about it. It's, okay, it's just what I went every through. two, three weeks. Like, geez, fuck out of here. Fuck out of here is about what grinds your gears, and right. that grinds my gears. I'd like to thank Phoenix Born <laughs> sixty three for coming on to the show. We appreciate thank the you, knowledge you. drop you have. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you on Instagram. 
Uh, yeah, basically in my name tag, uh, Phoenix Born 63 with underscores as is. Um, I just post whatever I do in life. Uh, currently, I was doing, well, I'm currently doing a weekly motivational word series. So you'll see that if you happen to go on the page. Um, just, I just do it for fun, just help out others. But yeah, that's where you see me. Um, I was very thankful being on the show. Anytime y'all need me, let me know I'm here. I got y'all. Very exciting. Very exciting. There, there could be other stuff in the works with uh, good old Phoenix born, you know, down the road for, you know, Generation Shock and uh, Phoenix born. So we'll see what the, the future holds. Um, <laughs> as always, though, I'd like to thank Messiah for, you know, showing up late, uh, you know, but he's here. What? I'm just, sorry, I didn't mean to throw, <laughs> throw you under the bus there. Uh, but it's the end of the show. <laughs> you know, nobody's watching at this point. Um, anyway, guys, as always, thanks for uh, tuning in. Thanks for watching. And until next week, we'll see you later. Peace.